Are you interested in trying Redensor for hair loss, but you can't find any good information? Well, if that's you, you couldn't have come to a better place. We have made this video just for you. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Guys, if you're personally worried about your own hair loss, then do make sure to click the link in the description to take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz. All you've got to do is answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert information on how to regrow healthy hair. So Redensol is the name of a compound that was developed a few years ago to fight hair loss. Today you can find it sold as an active ingredient in various products by different brands. These often contain it in a formulation with other active ingredients, typically natural topical stimulants and vitamins. Redensol was launched in 2014 by Swiss company Inducem. Shortly afterwards, Inducem were acquired by Givauden. This is another large Swiss company who manufacture flavors, fragrances and cosmetic ingredients. On Givaudan's website, Redenso is listed as an anti-hair loss treatment that can also promote the growth of eyelashes and eyebrows. So straight away, you know you're dealing with the generic hair growth agonist, not something specific to androgenetic alopecia or pattern hair loss. Redenso is actually composed of four molecules. The two big ones are patented molecules called DHQG and EGCG2. There's also glycine and zinc. Together, their four compounds are meant to target and stimulate two classes of cells in the hair follicles. Firstly, the stem cells in the bulge area of the follicle. These stem cells have the potential to proliferate rapidly and develop into any number of mature cells, including follicle, skin, and sebaceous gland cells. The other category of that redensile target are the dermal papilla cells that are located at the very base of the hair follicle. These are crucial to the development of the hair shaft and send signals that specify the size, shape, and color of the shaft. You can see in this graphic how the various compounds in Redenso are meant to work in combination to promote hair growth. With four different molecules, the biochemistry can get pretty tricky, so I'm not going to bore you with very specific details. I've linked to the Inducem technical document in the description, so you can read it yourself if you want to get into the nitty gritty of things. Now, there is a lack of peer-reviewed research on Redenso. There's generally not a lot of information on this thing, period. So we have to rely heavily on the data originally provided by Inducem when it launched the product in 2014. For starters, what kind of results can you expect from Redenso? Well, let's have a look at the results of the Inducem's clinical test. Their study recruited 26 men with hair loss, of three or four on the Norbert scale. The study was randomized and placebo controlled. So 14 of the men received a lotion that contained 3% redenso and the other 12 got a placebo. They applied the lotion on their head once a day, so 84 straight days. That's close to around three months. At the end of this, redenso significantly increased the percentage of hairs that were in the active growth phase of their cycle, the so-called anagen phase. At the same time, it significantly decreased the percentage of hairs in the resting phase of their cycle, the so-called telogen phase. You can see in these graphs the percentage of hairs in the growth phase on the top row, and in the bottom the percentages in resting. The successive bars in each graph shows the percentage at the start of the study after one month and when the study ended after three months. Redenso is in the striped bars and placebo is in the solid bars. Interestingly, the people at Inducem who wrote this report acknowledge an increase in antigen growth hairs, even in the placebo-treated men, though this obviously wasn't as pronounced as in the Redenso. And the report attributes this to, quote, mechanical activation of microcirculation, meaning that even as they rubbed in the placebo lotion on their scalps for a few seconds a day, these men were able to stimulate some of their follicles into the growth phase. Guys, there is a reason that we keep on coming back to scalp tension in these videos. It is simply key if you want to tackle your hair loss at its root. I'll link you to that video in the description. But going back to the Videnso study, there was an average regrowth of 17 hairs per centimeter squared in the redensile treated men. Bear in mind that this was in a clearly marked area of the scalp, presumably on the border between the baldness and the healthy hair. This is where treatment is likely to give the best results. In addition to a moderate increase in hair counts, the redensile also seemed to thicken the hair shafts. And guys, if this effect is pronounced, it can actually have a greater cosmetic impact compared to just increasing the absolute number of hair because it's the volume of the hair mass that's going to cover the scalp. And when you increase the diameter of the hair shaft, the volume goes up substantially. You can see the before and after of three men who responded very well to the Redenso. According to the information in the document, 
these three men had an increase of between 29 and 43 hairs per centimeter squared. These are very high figures, so they were almost certainly the top responders in the study. These pictures show moderate but clearly visible regrowth, certainly comparable to what you'd get from a good responder to minoxidil. Now guys, there is something that I wasn't sure that I was going to discuss with you today, but in the end, I kind of felt like I had an ethical obligation to share this with you. And it's something that puzzled me deeply about the Indu-Chem documentation on Redensil. It's bizarre to say the least. And here it is. Remember that we just saw the average hair growth in the active treatment group was 17 hairs per centimeter squared. Now, as I said, in studies of this kind, hair counts are always taken in the part of the scalp where you're likely to see the best results. So if you're a Norwood 4, you're not going to bother taking a hair count at the temples, for example. Those are long gone and never coming back. But here's what the authors of this report did. They extrapolated this number of 17 and multiplied it by the total number of squared centimeters on the scalp, which is 600. So they basically said that we counted the 17 hairs in this one centimeter squared and they were on average 17. So we're gonna multiply 17 by 600 and arrive at the total number of hairs that Redensil regrows on the scalp which if you do this calculation is 10,200 new hairs. This easily beats what you get with an extensive top of the range hair transplant and was supposedly achieved with a topical solution in the span of three months. Now this calculation and this claim of over 10,000 new hairs is repeated throughout this document. And running the same kind of crazy math on the top responders, Indrochem arrives at a total of 28,000 new hairs for the top responders in this study in three months. That's the effect of multiple hair transplants. It's pretty crazy. And guys, we found the press releases and news stories where Redensil was first released in 2014 and found this claim being repeated everywhere. For example, in this March 2014 story, which we've linked to below, the global scientific manager of Indrochem is quoted as saying, this active ingredient gives better results within 84 days than a hair transplantation by an aesthetic surgeon, up to 28,200 new hairs. The average for a hair graft surgery is 8,000 hairs. These are the hair loss experts. How could they possibly not know that this is just not the case? I don't want to say anything more on this, but I can tell you that it certainly killed some of my early excitement as I was going through the results in this report. With regards to side effects, the only information that we get in the report is that Redensil does not irritate the skin or the eyes, and nor does it cause any allergies or mutations. But generally, by all accounts, there appear to be little to no side effects from this stuff. Now, Redensil is classed as a cosmetic compound, not a pharmaceutical, so you can get it without prescription. And as mentioned earlier, it's included in all sorts of products. Usually, these are in the form of serums or oils, and they are sold for both men and women. Prices vary, but you're generally looking between $30 to $60 for a small bottle. These are generally high-end products. Now, I have to say, we haven't had a chance to test any of these ourselves, so we can't make any recommendations at this point. But if you've tried any of them on your hair, we would love to hear from you in the comments. Guys, make sure to click the videos on the screen now to learn more about scalp tension and hair loss.